everyone. Good evening and uh, welcome to my first YouTube live stream. Um, so uh, <coughs> thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking about the uh, <coughs> my custom tuning, the wild tuning. So we're going to start with um, the questions that are up already. Um, we're going to start with Soyash Kumar. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Um, he says he's going to be asleep by the time this goes live, but uh, he's posting some questions anyway. Um, <clears throat> so it's asking if I can take a B flat harp and um, play draw seven whole tone bend. No problem. So in the draw seven, you have. The same three bends as you have in uh, draw three. Um, slightly uh, more difficult to control at the top. Um, not necessarily more difficult, just you, you're, you're not used to playing draw bends as high as this. Um, and it takes a little while to uh, build up the muscle memory for them as it as it would have done when you when you were first learning on hole three. Um, so I think about this like changing vowel sounds. So we're going a, u, o, or. So a, u, o, or. And on hole seven. Um, the difference when you're playing it high up is just that you, you don't have to, um, it's a much smaller movement. So down here, I'm pulling my tongue right back and I'm having to drop my jaw down slightly and open up to get that bottom bend. Up here, um, it's all tongue movement. <clears throat> so I'm actually creating a smaller space um, in my mouth, moving my tongue forward and trying to uh, <coughs> increase the air pressure. Um, low bends take more air volume, which is why you have to open up and drop your jaw down. <coughs> Higher bends take more air pressure, um, but not as much volume. Um, and I actually like that because uh, let's say you were playing a lick like this. Um, it's quite difficult to move through that quickly, <coughs> low down. Um, it'd be more more difficult still on a, a lower key harp um, because I'm having to use a lot of air and, and move my mouth around a lot. Um, playing it on the same notes high up. Um, I don't have to use nearly as much air and it's just tiny little movement with the tongue to get the bend so you can get around it much quicker. <coughs> okay, um, same for the nine whole step bend. Well, it's the same deal with the, the whole step bend on the nine. Um, uh, so for that half step bend, you barely have to do anything. Just move the tongue a little bit. If that's the front of your tongue, you just arching your tongue up. Um, I find I, I tend to, if I'm going to sustain one of these high bends, um, I usually put vibrato on it just to iron it out and make it smoother. Um, it's quite a cool sound as well. Um, and also talking about doing vibrato on bends, um, <clears throat> if I'm doing vibrato on a bend low down, I usually use a throat vibrato, which gives you that kind of canned heat sound, especially if you do it um, heavy. Um, <clears throat> if at the top end that doesn't work so well, um, so I tend to use what I refer to as the chin wag vibrato where <clears throat> you basically just um sustain the bend and then move your jaw up and down at the speed you want the vibrato to be so 
Okay. Um, <laughs> by the way, this this one is an 1847. Um, it's not for sale in the 1847 model yet. Um, <clears throat> most of my harps in this tuning are still prototypes that I um, had made before the actual tuning was released publicly. Okay, next question. Um, can you demonstrate third position minor scales and how you would use them in a rock jam? Well, uh, to be quite honest with you, I, I still prefer standard Richter tuning for playing in third position. Um, <clears throat> this tuning was designed, I, basically my idea behind this tuning was, okay, we, we play in second position 90% of the time. Um, especially for the kind of rock or blues rock stuff that, that I do. Um, second position just has that. <laughs> that kind of sound that we all know and love. Um, and I, I kind of just wanted to try and, because um, every time you change a tuning, you gain one thing and you lose another. There's always a slight compromise. Um, so I designed this just to be really, really good at doing one thing, uh, which is playing second position, minor pentatonic or blue scale stuff through all three octaves. Um, and I made it so that you can get a rich vibrato on all of the big notes, right? Even, even in the upper octave. <laughs> So that's playing the blue scale all through three octaves without any overblows, without any blow bends even. Um, it's all just standard, mainly draw notes. Um, there's not many blow notes in there at all. And uh, draw bends. So you can play in third position. Um, <laughs> But to be quite honest with you, I haven't spent much time exploring that. Um, I still prefer standard tuning for, for playing other positions. Uh, <clears throat> next question. Hi from Germany. Hi. Uh, Derek, it was either this or Emmerdale Farm. Wow, I hope you're still there. Good job, EastEnders isn't on. The Woozle Effect, hello. <clears throat> Greens from Canada. Greens from England. Hello from Berlin. Okay, a uh, question from Derek Garforth. Um, what do you have to relearn to play your tuning over a standard Richter harp? Great question. Um, not very much, to be honest. Um, in terms of technique and sort of theory, you don't really have to relearn anything. Um, that, that's the idea behind it. Uh, you have to relearn a bit of muscle memory. Um, so just to explain, so holes one to five are exactly the same as standard tuning. Um, I've always um, loved everything about holes one to five. When I started first experimenting, trying to come up with, you know, the, the, the ultimate uh, rock tuning, I did experiment changing notes within Holes 1 to 5 as well. And all I really learned from that was that actually I really like Holes 1 to 5 being the way that they are. Um, my favorite thing to do on the harmonica is just wailing on 4 and 5 draw. <laughs> it's just my favorite sound to make. Um, and there's a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> a lot of our stuff that I play around holes four and five, sliding down a hole two um, that I just didn't want to let go. So one to five is exactly the same. Um, <clears throat> so hole six is where it changes. Um, thing that annoyed me the most about Richter tuning is the fact that your octave when we're playing in second position, your octave above the root note uh, is a blow note, it's blow six, right? 
And that means you can't get very much vibrato on it, and you can't sort of scoop <laughs> scoop up to that note um, to add expression to it. Uh, and this is something that, because I play guitar as well, um, and I mainly I mainly listen to guitarists and singers. Um, I don't really listen to much harmonica these days. Um, so <laughs> guitar players always bend their B string up to the up to the root like that. <clears throat> So I had to turn, uh, basically turn hole six to be the same as hole two, but an octave up. Um, I'm not the first person to have that idea. Brendan Power did um, did a similar thing with the power bender tuning. The difference there between mine and his is that um, the blow note in his hole six is different to the, the blow note in um, hole two, which means... <laughs> Hole six on the power bender only bends a half step down to a, a a major seven, whereas this bends a whole step down to a minor seven, and obviously it's the minor seven that's in the blues scale and the minor pentatonic scale. So I found with, with the power bender, and I think that's a great tuning by the way. Um, for what I wanted to do, uh, it, it it wasn't working because when you <laughs> scoop up to that note from a major seven it colors everything major and uh the majority of the music that i play is is minor so <clears throat> um so back back to the question what, what do you have to relearn um in holes one to five you don't relearn anything uh the first step when you're getting used to this is to um just play your blues scale <laughs> um but play a draw in hole six to complete the octave instead of a blow. Okay, um, now your flat seven, that's draw five. Um, you've got a choice of where you play that note now because you can play it as a straight draw five or you can play it as a draw six whole step bend, just like playing a draw two whole step bend. Okay. Now, hole seven is exactly the same as hole three. Um, so you've got a major third. And it bends up to a tone and a half. Um, and the blow note in it is your root note again. So just like you have that, that repeat uh, note there in draw two and blow three, you've got the same thing here in hole six and seven. Um, and people have said to me, well, what's the point in having these repeated notes? Why didn't you put a different note there? Well, I did think about all of that, and I did try some uh, different options. Uh, some of them are, you know, a better option for playing a certain song, but this is the one that I find most uh, versatile. Um, the problem is when you start putting another note here, another note there, to give you more chromatic capability, um, if, like me, you <laughs> glissando to notes for effect, uh, if you've got a weird a weird note in there, like I have one in, in hole 10 that doesn't really belong to the chord, then you, you get these weird chords that don't fit when you're glissandoing, right? Um, and also, the blow note in the hole determines how much the draw note bends. So that's something that you have to take into account as well. All right, so going up the scale. So the holes one to five are the same. Draw, uh, six is now a draw instead of a blow. Seven is just the same as um, hole three, so you got your half step bend. Hole eight is exactly the same as hole four. So uh, the way I would think of this harp, um, if I was going to write the numbers on here, it doesn't actually have numbers on it, but I would number it one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Okay, so you haven't actually got to relearn anything there because the relationships between the draw and blow read are just the same as uh, holes that you play lower down, right? So one, two, three, four, five two, three, four, um, 
whole nine uh, is the same as two again, and, and the same as six is now. So it bends, it's your root, and it bends down to a flat seven. Okay, I'm going to go back to the uh, B flat for a minute. Okay, so two, six, and nine are all like hold two. Um, <clears throat> hold ten, this is another thing um, that was inspired by uh, two of Brendan Powers' tunings. Um, but what he did was he switched around the, the blow and the draw reads in hold 10. So that blow bend that you get in a standard Richter harp when you bend blow 10 down to a, uh, down a whole step gives you a four to a minor third in second position. Um, you now get that as a draw bend. <laughs> which I find much easier to control. Um, I can get more uh, more attack on it, more vibrato, and um, more tone and resonant out of it as a draw note as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, next question. Can you talk about overblows? Well, um, I'm, I don't use a great deal of overblows. Um, I, I can do them. I generally choose not to. Um, I mean, if there's a note that I really need for a song and <clears throat> the only way to get it is to overblow, then I might use it. Um, I do that in, in Lazy. There's a little chromatic run in that. Um, I use a four and a five overblow in. Um, on this tuning, the only time I would use it really would be for the four overblow. Um, six overblow isn't needed anymore on this for a minor third because you've got it as a draw bend now in whole seven. Um, and the five overblow is no longer needed because you've got it as a half step bend. In whole six. Um, uh, yeah, I might use the four overblow if if I was going to um, if I was playing minor key stuff. Um, I mean, what what do you want me to say about about overblows? Like how how to do them, or um, if you could just send me another question, just elaborating a bit. I'll try and answer that for you. <coughs> uh, Hi, Tibor. Hi, Anita. Hi, Michael. Uh, Tibor, what key of harmonica do you use for lazy? That's a B flat. Um, <clears throat> so, it's B flat, second position. <laughs> it's really just blues blue scale stuff it's just going through all three octaves um and making use of that um uh, you know the draw six you can get the, the vibrato on it um it just doesn't work playing that song as a blow note it'd be <laughs> you just can't get that expression on it as a blow note <coughs> Whoa. Uh, hello from Barcelona. Hi. Hello from Poland. Hello. Uh, Bieber fans don't understand your music. Uh, regardless, is it better to buy your harps from your site or is it no difference to use site or site? Um, good question. Thanks. Um, that reminds me, actually. I, I've put a promo on um, <clears throat> just for 
today as I'm doing this video, I've done a price drop on my website. So um, they're usually 70 pounds on there and they're now 60 just for today. Um, if you order on the website, it comes directly from me. Um, since you asked, it is better, it's better for me if you buy them from me. Let's put it that way. I get a bigger cut. Um, so I prefer when you buy them from me. <clears throat> okay, Anita, who or what made you first interest in playing harmonica and how old were you when you started? Um, Sunny Boy Williamson 2 and uh, the song Help Me. Um, that's it. Um, I can remember loving that song since I was maybe seven, seven years old. Um, Dad used to play it a lot. And um, I started playing when I was 16. Uh, I was at a house party and I found this little plastic uh, Guinness harmonica laying around. So I nicked it and started, uh, started teaching myself on that. Um, and then I played along to Muddy Waters Records for a couple of years. That's pretty much all I did was playing Muddy Waters Records in my bedroom. Um, all day, literally all day, and my lips would bleed because I play so much. Um, and it, yeah, it, Sonny Boy Williamson helped me. Still, probably my favorite harmonica recording of all time, actually. Um, and although you may not necessarily hear it in my playing now, even when I'm playing hard rock, I'm still really just channeling Sonny Boy and James Cotton. That, that's really it. <laughs> um, Jerry Portnoy, as well. A, a lot of guys, a lot of guys, Big Walt Horton, Junior Wells, Charlie Master White. But um, it was it was certainly uh, Sunny Boy that got me interested. Okay, um, thanks, Bill. Uh, Derek, what's the best place to buy your harps from? My website. Uh, and what key would be best to go for first to play rock? Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Pr probably an A. Um, my favorite key in this tuning is, is the B flat, um, which would mean to be playing in the key of F, um, just because of the where it sits. The low notes aren't too low that, that it becomes lethargic and the, the high notes aren't too high that they're really tight and squeaky. Um, but the, the A is really nice as well. Um, this is an A. <laughs> Yeah, the, the A is nice, um, and there's a lot of rock tunes in in the key of A. Guitarists like playing in, sorry, in in the key of E with an A harp. Guitarists like playing in in E, so uh, I I would recommend starting with an A. Uh, I need to do I play other instruments? Yeah, um, I'm a singer, and I started off playing drums actually, but I haven't played drums in a band for about getting on for fifteen years. Um, I play guitar as well, mainly just for writing. Um, I was playing guitar on stage, playing lead for a while. Um, I'm, I'm not as accomplished on guitar as I am on harmonica. Um, I'm kind of pretty good at doing one thing on it, which is sort of Albert King slash kind of Paul Kossoff style. Um, yeah, it, it's all about... Same as with harmonica for me, it's all about the vibrato, really, just intense. You can't beat it. Um, and, and actually, yeah, my, my guitar playing has inspired this tuning because there were things... I'd end up playing guitar on new songs that I was writing because I wanted to... do those kind of licks going up to that octave with the vibrato on it. And just I couldn't do it on harmonica, so I'd, I'd play guitar on the track instead. And after a while, I just thought this is fucking stupid. Like, 
um, you know, I'm I'm not <laughs> not going to be playing a moniker on any of these new songs I'm writing. Uh, so I, I sat down with a pen and paper and um, start writing out the notes and thinking about moving stuff around and uh, went from there. Hi, Mark. Uh, Dan, love your version of Parisian walkways. Thank you. Um, I've seen it played on one heart, but you play it on two. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I don't actually use my tuning on that track. Um, it's done with an A minor, a natural minor, and a standard C, right? Um, the reason I do it on two, I could play the whole song on either one of these. Um, the C harp has been played in fourth position, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I don't usually play that bit on this harp. <laughs> it takes take me a minute to work it out. Um, but anyway, the reason why I play it on two harps and switch between them is, again, um, to get that vibrato and that intensity uh, that Gary Moore gets on the guitar, um, so there are certain big notes. Um, now, if one of those big notes happens to fall on a blow, <laughs> blow one to six, then you're you're not going to be able to get that wide vibrato on it. Um, so that's the reason I play it on two. <laughs> so that fast bit there playing in fourth position on this one wouldn't work. Um, and it's to do with how the notes are laid out because... <laughs> I use a lot of double stops in that to get that big, uh, thick, kind of distorted, crunchy sound. <laughs> um, so that's just two holes side by side. Um, and that's, you know, possible on one heart, but not the other, depending on which lick I'm, I'm playing in the song. <clears throat> um, Richard. Hi, Richard. Uh, can we buy your side or harp in the States? Um, do you think you will ever come to the US for a tour? Well, um, yes, you can buy it in the States. Um, if you order from my website, it's willharmonicawild.com. Um, I post worldwide. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hoping to come to the States for a tour. I was out there last year for, for Spa, um, and I am hoping to get out for a tour um by the way if anyone if anyone knows anyone that can hook that up then uh please get in touch um but at, at the moment there's there's nothing uh nothing concrete in place patrick um cool thanks patrick antonio are you going to share any more James Cotton style lessons? Well, maybe. Um, I did a, a general one about, you know, James Cotton style, <coughs> which was talking a lot about those. <coughs> those kind of double stops and things. Um, the thing with, with Cotton, really, um, he's not... Um, you know, he's not really a technical player in the notes that he plays. He doesn't really do anything melodically very, very clever. But um, he's got this intensity and um, aggression about his style, um, which really, for, for me, is just about those double stops. <laughs> big tone um and a really 
thick, juicy vibrato. So. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Wolf had a similar kind of fat, um, thick vibrato like that. The Woozle effects. Uh, can you play the canned heat on the road again? Solo lick on your tuning. Good question. And yes, yes, you can. Um, okay, so this is one of mine in the key of A, which is where that song's in. Um, so the only <clears throat> in uh, on the road again, um, he basically altered one note on his harp. Uh, so he tuned the draw six up to a minor third. Um, so on this, you can get that minor third now as a draw seven half step bend. So. <laughs> So yeah, you, you can do it really well on this. Um, and obviously this tuning gives you a lot of other possibilities as well, other than just being able to, to do that. Um, <clears throat> Anita says, what's the website? Uh, it's willharmonicawild.com. Uh, that's wild with an E on the end. Ahmed. Oh, just a reminder of using a D harp for a demo up and down the harp, please. Um, yes, he messaged me about this on Facebook earlier. Um, so this is a, a D. Now, this sounds really high. It actually, you know, it goes higher than guitar register. Um, when I'm just playing like this, it might sound, especially on on this mic, I'm just using that inbuilt one, might sound a little bit shrill and shrieky, but um, I actually really like the D harp for hard rock stuff that I've been doing, um, particularly, you know, through an amp um, with a bit of gain and a bit of delay, it sounds really cool. <laughs> Again, because it's slightly higher, it means you require less air, um, slightly more air pressure to get the, the high bends. But um, much less air, so you can move through the, the bends much more quickly. So I'm trying to <laughs> refrain from just uh, shredding throughout this video. Uh, shipping to the US, someone's asking. Uh, yes, I do ship to the US. Um, for one harp, it costs eight pounds for shipping. Um, if you're buying a few, because it's done by weight, it, it might be a little bit more than that. But um, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. <clears throat> and I'll say again, for those who've just joined, I've put a, uh, a price drop on my website on these. Um, just for today, as I'm doing this video, they're down from £70 to £60. This feels like QVC. <laughs> the shopping channel. Much love from Algeria. Thank you. I saw you using two hearts at the same time. Um, I guess it's to extend the scale. Can you please explain it about how you how you do it? Well, I, I went into this already. It might, might have been before you um, tuned in. Um, so sometimes, like in Parisian walkways, I, I use two harps um, because I prefer to play one lick on one harp and one lick on the other, um, mainly because I prefer draw notes to blow notes. I think they're more expressive and more uh, guitar-like. Um, so that that's why I might do that. Uh, another reason might be 
if I'm changing positions, um, quite often uh, in a slow blues, for example, I might, if I'm playing a, a long solo and I want to really build it, um, so I'm searching for my D heart, <coughs> um, then I might, I might start solo, you know, bring the dynamics down and start in third and play something a bit more melodic um, with a natural minor or maybe a Dorian scale. <laughs> By the way, that's an overblow I'm using there. Um, six overblow. Um, the only difference, by the way, between an Aeolian natural minor scale and a, a Dorian minor scale is um, in third position. You, you replace the draw seven from the Dorian scale with a six overblow. So that's natural minor. And that's Dorian. So, yeah, I might start in third. <laughs> and then if I want to kind of lift things and get a bit more aggressive, then I might switch to uh, to second position. That's another reason I might switch arms. <clears throat> or sometimes I might want to play part of the song in standard tuning and part of it in um, in in my custom tuning. Mm -hmm. Um, in the case of Lazy as well, that's, that song has two key changes in it. So I start off with a B flat harp, um, then the song changes up to uh, G. Um, I don't actually play in that section. And then it, it, it uh, modulates again to A at the end. So in Lazy, I'm using a B flat harp uh, for all the solo section at the beginning and uh, a standard D harp for the solo section at the end. <clears throat> All right. Sorry if I'm skipping some of these out. I'm just trying to. There's a, a lot of questions standing up here. Uh, you recommend a session steel for an absolute beginner? Um, yeah, I mean, a session steel certainly wouldn't be a bad choice for a beginner. Um, it might be a, a little bit more money than you really need to to spend um i mean any of sidles harps are a decent quality um all of the you know the, the the big brand um companies you know they're they're all good there's not a huge amount of difference between them all um i just wait one second i'm just gonna go and grab something um <laughs> so when, when i was learning um I was 16 when I started, and I didn't have a great deal of money being, uh, you know, a student. So this was, like I said, my first harp was a plastic Guinness promotional harmonica that I found in Kia C. Um, I learned quite a lot on that. Um, and then I bought, I bought this, uh, some Chinese-made thing. It cost, at the time, I think about £3.99. Um, I mean, it works fine, um, and you can learn on it. You know, there's one note. <laughs> if I hit it too hard, it chokes. That that kind of happens with too bad. It takes more effort to play a real, I mean, this is a real cheap harmonica. I wouldn't really suggest you get one of these. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is you don't have to spend loads of money on a um as a beginner. Um, until your plan reaches a certain level, um, you, you probably won't be able to tell a great deal of difference between you know, a 60 pound harp and a 30 pound harp. So I would start with something in the, the middle price range. If, if you can afford to get, you know, to get a session steel, then by, by all means, uh, they're great harps. Okay, uh, Kevin, 
Are you a pucker player mainly and high? High Kevin. Um, yes, uh, 90 percent of the time. Um, I, the way I play my single notes is is pretty much always puckered. Um, I was self-taught. I wasn't even aware that tongue blocking was a thing. So, um, you know, that that's the way I started playing. I also hold it in the wrong hand for, for the same reason. Um, I've learned to play both ways. So that's tongue block. So sometimes if I'm playing like a more traditional blues or a shuffle where I want that vamping thing, I will switch to tongue block. Um, it's because it's more appropriate for that that style. Um, I still do all of my bends puckered though. So even if I was, um, I'd, I'd still switch back to a pucker just to get the bends. Um, for rock stuff and blues rock stuff, uh, I always play puckered. Um, not just because it's easier, but because in my opinion, it's a much better, more suitable tone. Um, <clears throat> when you pucker, you get a brighter sound. Um, people always get, I've talked about this in other videos. People always go on about how, uh, you know, tongue blocking is superior tone to, to, uh, lip pursing or puckering. It, it's not, it's just a different tone, right? It's like, you know, a, a guitar player doesn't use a strap for every song they might use a telly for something because it's brighter or they don't always play with the you know the, the pickup selector in the in the same place it's the same thing um so for rock stuff for the same reason that you know rock singers tend to sing in a high register you know when when you've got loud guitars and drums going on you want it to cut through so you want a bright sound and the difference between a tongue block <laughs> And a pucker, you can just get more more brightness in the sound with a pucker. Also for playing fast, you can do that tongue blocks. I couldn't anyway. Um, okay, have you ever played through a pedal directly into a PA as opposed to using an amp? If yes, what was your experience? Yeah, I did try that once or twice and no <laughs> it no it's it's not as certainly not as good as using an amp um there is something that i use called an, an axe effects too which is basically uh it's a, a rack mount unit um a bit like uh line six make a thing called the helix um there's a thing called a kemper that guitarists use as well um, and that, that's basically a, a, a sound processor, very high end, like a lot of metal bands use them and they cost you know, a couple of grand. Um, and they basically simulate all different kinds of amps and pedals and they have speaker simulations in as well. So you can go direct out of one straight into the PA or straight into the desk if you're recording. Um, my experience with those is they, yeah, they, they sound pretty much as good um, and, and feel and respond the same as playing through the real amp. But as far as just putting a pedal straight into the PA, nah, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I like D for rock. Me too. Uh, Anita, do you ever play guitar and harmonica at the same time? That's what I'm working on, combining the two. Um, I don't I, I mean i have kind of played around with it but um on stage i'd usually switch between one or the other i've, I've never been a rack a rack player um i think you know the kind of stuff i'm playing on harp would be extremely difficult to do on a rack while playing someone else but um who knows uh by the way if, if you're into the, the kind of rack uh guitar and harmonica thing check out a guy called eddie martin uh, he's a friend of mine who does that very well uh derek garforth do you just play your own tuning now um no um if i'm playing traditional 
you know, straight blues stuff, then uh, I tend to play more uh, standard tuning. Uh, not always, but I, I'd still use standard tuning a bit for that. Uh, songs that I've been playing for years in standard tuning, I still play uh, a lot of those in standard tuning just because I'm used to it. Um, having said that, every new song that I've written since developing this tuning, um, I've used them on. Uh, so going forward, it looks like they're going to start, you know, standard tuning is going to start to disappear from the set. Um, like I said, though, you know, I, I still, my tuning is just very good at doing one thing. It's not to say you can't do other things with it, but but I designed it just for doing second position blue scale, minor pentatonic scale really well. Um, it does uh, major pentatonic well as too. <laughs> So you get that that kind of country Charlie McCoy style bend in the upper octave now too. Um, <clears throat> so I've kind of forgot, forgotten where I was going with that one. Uh, but yeah, so all, all the new songs I've been writing, most of which aren't released yet, by the way. Um, I, I'm working on a rock album at the moment. Uh, the last record I did was was like a blues rock covers album and um i used my tuning on that on lazy and on uh trying to think now a couple of the other tracks anyway uh politician was one um and year blues it was used on um i'd only actually had the tuning for about a month or two when i recorded that album so I hadn't fully got to grips with it at that time. Um, whereas now I've spent a lot of time on it. I've toured with it. Um, stuff I'm doing it with it on the on the new record is uh, a bit more advanced. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to be out yet. There's there's still a lot to do, but I'll, I'll keep you all posted on that. <coughs> Hi Russ, uh, when will the eighteen forty seven be available? I think the session steals are a little too airy for my plan. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I, I must admit, I, I prefer the 8 and 47 as well. Um, they're, they're the harps that I've generally always played. Um, I did start getting, you know, my custom tunings in, in session steel. Uh, <laughs> this is it's really sad, but mainly just because they're a different colour and easy to recognize on stage um i have all my straight keys in the in the classic all my flat keys in the uh in the wood comb and then uh i had my own tunings in the you know with the orange comb but um yeah i i'd prefer the 8 and 47s too they they are more airtight they're they're louder um sometimes you get a session steel that's really really good and and is equal to an 8 and 47 but um yeah, uh, they're more, obviously the 1847 is quite a lot more expensive than the Session Steel, um, which is, I think, why Seidel made the decision to put this tuning out uh, in the Session Steel model first, because most people don't want to spend that much money. Uh, but I will I will speak to them about that and uh, see, see if we can sort that out. Francesca. In your opinion, are there any anatomical, physical differences between each of us? I think so, and so we will not be able to do all the same things. Although a person can study a lot. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of things I've tried to learn that, you know, I've, I've tried to learn several other instruments, um, even with guitar and vocals, which I've studied. I, I still study vocals. I'm, I'm, training with Nikki Lambourne from Never the Bride at the moment. Um, and I've certainly seen big improvements since since having vocal coaching with her. Um, some people are, are, are naturally kind of inclined or gifted, whatever you want to call it, to certain things, whether it's, you know, maths or uh, you know, cooking, baking, whatever. 
But um, for me, it happened to be harmonica. I didn't really choose that. I, I did find it very easy um, compared to most people. And, and I've seen through, through teaching other people from beginner level, um, stuff that, that might take some people a long time, um, didn't take me very long. Um, I, I was able to do single notes and, and bends and stuff within the first few days of, of teaching myself. Um, when I got to like, like uh, octaves, I had a hard time with octaves, harder than most people. And, and blow bands, I had a harder time than, than a lot of people that I've taught to. Um, so, you know, some people find certain, certain things really easy. Some people don't. I, you know, anything can be learned to a degree if you're dedicated enough and you practice enough and put the time in. Um, but yeah, I, I would agree with you. I'd say, you know, not everyone can be an expert at everything. Otherwise, you know, we'd all be uh, rocket scientists. <clears throat> all right. Um, I'm sure you've played around with Whammer Jammer, as all of us do. Any plans to break it down with a wild tune to the tutorial? M maybe. I haven't actually listened to that song for a long time. Um, I don't even think how it goes. Um, I can't remember the rest of it. Maybe. I, to be completely honest, I, I'm not... Although I've done a lot of this in the past um, to help build build my YouTube channel, I'm not a big fan of dissecting songs for people note for note because it, it goes against um, the way I believe that music should be learnt. Um, nobody ever taught me a song note for note. I had to work it out by ear. So and and that that trains your ear and helps improve your understanding of the instrument. If someone gives it all to you, you don't really get any better. You learn how to play that one song, but but that's it. You're really good at playing that song. Um, I prefer to teach general ideas and concepts, scales, techniques, rhythmical ideas, things that you can, um, you know, take on board and, and uh, interpret, represent um, you in your own way, right? Um, and that, that's how you sound like you and how you find your own licks and things rather than just copying other people's stuff. Um, the other thing, I mean, I'm, I've not really uh, <coughs> been a, a, you know, a big fan of, of that band, so I'm not sure what, what he would do live but i would imagine he probably doesn't play the whole thing the same way every time um especially not after years and years of playing it um maybe the first 12 or 24 bars he does the same every time as like a hook or like a head um but then i, I would have thought he he probably just goes off on a tangent um at the end of the day it's just a, a 12 bar a fast kind of 12 bar blues um so you can do anything on it you know um, maybe I'll break it down. I might break down a bit of it, perhaps like the main the main hook. But um, uh, yeah, there's there's nothing more, more boring to me than you know tabbing out an entire like three minute instrumental track. Um, sorry, uh, Mathis. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, my question is, have you already found something interesting in different positions other than cross up in the new tune? Any soulful lick in different positions? <sighs> yeah, kind of. Um, not particularly. To be honest, I, I haven't... Um, uh, th there's not really any other position that that I would play on, on my custom tuning that I wouldn't rather play on standard tuning. Um, no, I, I, I still prefer standard tuning for playing in all other positions. Um, I think because the way I've laid the notes out on this up is very specific to things you do in second. Um, 
it doesn't make the layout doesn't make so much sense at least to me when, when i play it in other positions um it's not to say that i won't um you know i've only been playing this tune for a couple of years i may start to find stuff like that eventually <coughs> um all I really use it for, as I said, is blue scale. Um, minor pentatonic scale, which is more or less the same thing, and occasionally... It's a major pentatonic scale stuff. Um, there's a few other passing notes in there that I might throw in as well from time to time <coughs> uh, do you lose anything at the middle octave with your tuning uh, maybe just third position stuff yes sort of um, the one thing um, the one thing that I miss when I'm playing my tuning from from Richter is that note that you usually have in draw six. I use that note all the time uh, in second and in third position. Um, this is a standard C. That draw six note, um, yeah. So I, I've had to lose that to, to get my root note there. Um, you still have that note now, but it's a whole step bend on draw seven. And because it's a bend, um, uh, you, you never you'll never get quite the same resonance out of it as you would with a you know an unbent note because it's got more sings more. Uh, bends always have that slight kind of muffled sound to them. Um, and I think you're right, that, that's probably why <coughs> why I don't like using my tune in fourth, third position so much, because that draw six <laughs> in the middle octave there is very important in third position. Uh, first position scales still there, yes. Uh, Barry, great show at Spa last year. Hope they bring you back. Thank you very much. I hope they do too. Uh, Overblow in first position, please, from Daniel. Okay, um, like I said, you know, I'm not a big overblower, but um, I'll show you what I can. So this is a standard C harp. So to get a blue scale, for example, in first position, in the middle octave, People usually avoid that middle octave in first position because there's so many missing notes that require overblows. So to play a blue scale in the middle octave in first, it would be blow four, then a four overblow, and then a draw five, and then a five overblow, then blow six, and then a six overblow, and then a seven. So you've got um, <laughs> only one draw note in there and three overblows. So that's why people generally avoid the middle octave when playing first position blues, because it's just very, very awkward. Um, even when you do it, it, it doesn't sound as nice as uh, if you played it in second or third position. So. I'm not really one for playing stuff just to be clever. I'm, you know, I, I prefer to play it in a way that it sounds as good as it can sonically, um, which means avoiding note blows where possible and playing everything as a draw note um, where possible as well. Uh, so I've lost where I am in this feed. There's so many questions on here. <clears throat> um, Anita, feel free to shred. Thanks. <clears throat> um, 
is from Brazil. Hi. Uh, greetings from England. Okay. Uh, Craig says, a holes five and six, the same notes. I got your A a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So um, this is an A. Um, blow five and blow six are the same note. Now, a few people have asked me about this, why I chose to do that. Let me tell you why. Um, so, as I said, I wanted to keep holes one to five exactly the same as standard tuning because um, everything we do in, in holes one to five, there's a lot of stuff we do in, in holes one to five in second position blues um, that just sounds great. It's, it's that sound that we all know and love. <laughs> So I couldn't change any of that. Um, then hole six, I wanted to <clears throat> be the root note on the draw. Um, but I needed it to bend a full step. The reason being because for expression, I scoop up to that note from a bend, um, like on hole two. Um, <clears throat> and now... The amount that that draw note will bend is determined by what the blow note is in that hole because the bends give you the missing notes between the draw read and the blow read in each hole. Um, so, as I was saying earlier on, on Brendan Powers' power bender tuning, his below five is the flat seven, which means that the draw, uh, sorry, his blow six is the flat seven, which means the draw six only bends half a step. And he plays a lot of major key stuff, so that works really well for him because when he <laughs> scoops up on that draw six to the root, he's scooping up from a major seven, um, and that colours everything major. But most of my music, being more rock and blues-oriented, um, is is minor, minor pentatonic stuff, so I needed it to, to bend a whole step uh, so I could scoop up a full tone. So that's the reason for the uh, for for blow five and blow six being the same. It's not even that that's a note that that gets used very often by me in this tune. Um, it, they just had to be that way to allow the draw notes to bend the way that I wanted them to. Okay. Uh, Russ, was the best slow blues solo of yours to practice copying your tuning in order to get your head around the new layout? Um, good question. Um, I'm just trying to think. I've, I've only used these harps, as I said, on, on one album so far, which is the Bring It On Home album. Uh, as far as slow blues, politician perhaps? It's not like a slow, slow blues, but I, I did use it in that. Um, it goes like double time at the end, like kind of motorhead style, but the, the middle solo is um, is a bit more chilled out. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't necessarily copy me. Um, just, just learn the scale, um, learn the blues scale. <laughs> Like I said, the upper octave is laid out just like the lower octave. Think of it in, as holes one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, two, and then the notes and ten are just the other way around. Um, and 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 just start to play licks that you'd play at the bottom, up at the top. Um, yeah, the, the best way to get your head around these tunings is is just to learn scales first through connecting all three octaves and <clears throat> that builds up the muscle memory phil uh once again thanks for the help absolutely love these harmonicas thank you just wanted to know how you get so much power with your vibratos um well i don't know like i was saying certain certain aspects of harmonica playing came 
very naturally to me, and that was one of them. Um, I it, vibrato is the hardest thing for me to teach because it's so simple, yet most people find it difficult to do, and there's not much more information that I can offer you. But um, as far as what I'm doing, it's just this. <laughs> okay, so um, you'll see the larynx here, just here, is moving in and out as well. <clears throat> so it's like saying, um, uh, 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 if you imagine the letters U H, right? <clears throat> but whilst inhaling. Um, <laughs> And you, you kind of um, try and find the relaxed state. There's a kind of sweet spot. Um, everyone's will be a little bit different. Everyone has a slightly different natural vibrato speed. Uh, but there, there's kind of a sweet spot where um, you can just relax into the sound. Um, and when you find that, um, you get more resonance. Um, <laughs> just try and <clears throat> get the sound to resonate in, inside your whole head and chest cavity. Um, yeah. <clears throat> There's not a lot more <laughs> I can say about it than that at the moment. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, just get a nice, good, clean note with a lot of, um, you know, good, good tone. And then <laughs> just start to bring that in. <laughs> But it's important to keep your mouth open inside. Don't close any of this down and, and choke the note off. So you see, this isn't tensing up. It's just moving um, in and out slightly. But the breath is one consistent breath that's being pulled from the diaphragm. I thought it was only me that was unaware of tongue block. I was self-taught too. Yeah, well, you know, it's not um, the first thing that comes to mind, is it? When If you pick up a harmonica and think about playing a single note. Not to me, anyway. Uh, Grace, hi, well, do you know Kong Shang soloist harmonica? Is It's really good. Okay. Um, I don't want to get too much into the subject of Kong Shang hearts because I, I made a video about them recently. And uh, it started probably the longest um, uh, thread I've ever seen in a, in a harmonica forum on Facebook. Um, I do have one right here. And I can only say about it what I said about the other ones. I, I did a video review. I think I took it down now, actually, because it was too controversial, apparently. But um, uh, I was surprised by how good all of the Kong Shang harps played. Um, the, whatever it was called, the Amazing 20 and the something else. Um, but in, in that review, I said that they play really well. They play as good as any other harmonica, right? Um, nice bright sound, nice and airtight. Good, you know. Um, but... They went out of tune really quick. Um, one of them, the reed actually snapped in half in hole 10, I think. And another one, the reed got a, like a pinprick hole through through the middle of the reed. Um, and people were saying, well, you know, <clears throat> those are the lower, you know, the cheap uh, Kong Shangs. You should try the soloist, uh, which is this one, which is the more expensive one. Um, and actually, someone from Kong Shang got in touch with me and offered to send me one for free. Um, and again, I you know it, it plays really nice. Really nice, airtight, bright sound, bends easily. But the same things happened again. Um, I've only had this for a month or two, and I haven't been gigging it or anything. Um, it's actually what I had in my 
bag I was taking out uh, when I was going out teaching. And already, and here if I play that uh, four and seven octave, it's gone out of tune. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I do play quite aggressively. Um, I don't play really hard. Some people think because I play aggressively, um, I play really hard and like put loads of stress on the reeds but that's not the case if i was doing that the reeds would be choking all the time and and playing out of tune as i played them and i wouldn't be able to hold notes for as long as this okay so that's proof that i'm not using loads of air and loads of force um so you know maybe it's just the, the my style of playing but um they don't last very long for me, so um, I won't be using them for that reason. Um, <laughs> Kong Sheng really likes to copy other company science from. Yeah. Uh, do I like jazz? Mm, no, I don't. I'm being honest with you, I don't. It's it's probably, I like some like really old, <laughs> the kind of old jazz that sounds a bit like blues, you know, uh, Louis Armstrong. And Louis Armstrong, if you're in America, um, Dinah Washington, stuff like that, but sort of um, far out jazz with a lot of uh, weird notes and weird time signatures isn't really my thing. Um, I just it doesn't do anything for me emotionally. A lot of it actually makes me feel quite uncomfortable when I listen to it. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really like rock, blues. I like a lot of pop stuff, a lot of old soul stuff. I like some hip hop, uh, like some reggae, and I like most genres. Jazz is is probably the only one that I can say I don't really like. You know, that may change. It may change. Come back to me in a few years. I might be well into it. But uh... How much is 60 pounds in the US, someone's asking. Um, I don't know, let me Google that for you. Uh, <clears throat> approximately $77. Oop. Sorry, I've lost my place in the feed again. I don't know why, but the original session still needs a lot more air than yours, someone said. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before, you know, I, I generally prefer the 1847s from Seidel. Uh, session steels are, are very good as well, but they are, in my experience, a little less consistent than 1847s. Um, all the 1847s I've, I've ever had have been really good. Occasionally you'll get a session steel that's a, a bit airy. Um, usually just adjusting the, the gaps can, can help with that. Uh, what do I think about Yonberg harps? Do they play easier? I know they've both been airtight and have side of reeds. What's your opinion? Um, yeah, I have a, uh, a, a Yonberg here too that someone sent me. Um, and th this, this was the harp that I had um, that I used to take out around teaching with me too. Uh, so I was using this regularly for a few years and it eventually went out of tune but after a long time and a lot of playing it was the draw five that went on it yeah i like the yonberg it's a cool thing uh it looks different um i wouldn't say it's any more airtight than uh than any other side or harp i still prefer the 1847s to it um it's a cool harp. I like it. It's got the Steidl stainless reeds in it, so they last a long time. But yeah, no, they were right. Uh, Russ, is your fast vibrato in the upper octave achieved with your tongue as opposed to your throat? Uh, no. Um, on, on those high draw notes on my tuning, um, I tend to. Uh, this is a, a C. <laughs> Uh, if, if it's an unbent drill note up there, then I'll just use a throat vibrato, uh, but uh, a bit more gently. 
That's what I'm doing, by the way. <laughs> so that's just a throat vibrato. On, if I want to put vibrato on a bent note on, on the really high notes, then I tend to use the chin wag vibrato where you hold the bend. And just move your jaw up and down at the speed you want the vibrato to be. <clears throat> Someone says they can play Whammer Jammer on a Richter tune top. Just asking about a completely different tune. Oh, right. Okay. I, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. I mean, any anything you can play on Richter, you will be able to play on my tuning because all the same notes are, are there. Um, <clears throat> it just means that you'll have, you, you'll be able to put some more vibrato on uh, certain notes that you weren't able to before. Jane Doe says, are you single? I'm not, sorry. Um, what are we up to here? When I get my first wild tuned up, I'm planning on one of your personal Skype sessions. Uh, Please talk about these sessions if you would. Yeah, um, yeah, I do offer Skype lessons one to one. Um, I charge forty pounds per hour for those. Um, if you're interested, then <clears throat> um, send me a message either through the contact form on my website. Uh, if you go to willharmonicawild.com uh, and go to the contact page, or just email me at willharmonicawild at hotmail.com um i mean the way it works is you'll see me just like you're seeing me now um you can email me in in advance uh with anything that you'd like to to work on um you know if there's a particular song that you you always wondered what's going on in it or you know what position they're playing in or how they play a certain lick or certain effects um you can send me the a link to the song um and we can go through it all bit by bit, um, whether you, you know you're a beginner and you just need help <clears throat> going through all the basics, learning how to bend, tongue blocking, octaves, um, different positions, uh, improvising, you know, anything like that. What, what I tend to do with a new student is um, in the first lesson, I'll just ask them to play me something. Uh, so I can assess uh, what level they're at, and and I should be able to hear um, what what they need to work on, whether it's bending or you know tone, vibrato, um, whatever it may be, and and then we take it from there. Uh, <coughs> Question about yombo cups. Okay. I think I already covered that. Uh, Julian says, the way you teach is Bob on. Keep it as organic as you do. Thank you very much. Uh, makes the viewer work a bit harder to discover the magic. Okay. <laughs> uh, great Q&A. Thank you very much. Uh, Redshift313 says, the note layout on your tune tarps for me are more intuitive than Powerbender. No, I'm not a fan of sort of session steel harps. Well, okay. I mean, like, like I said, um, I will be speaking to Seidel about uh, manufacturing this in the 1847 model, um, which is my preferred model of harp. Um, so maybe you'll uh, prefer that. <coughs> uh, where is the address to get your new harp? Um, if you go to willharmonicawild.com, um, that's wild with an E on the end. Um, I think actually there might be a link. I can't remember if I put it below this video in the description. I think I put a link to, uh, to my website where you can buy them. I post to anywhere in the world and I'm running a promotion on them, uh, just today, 10 pounds off. <clears throat> Frank says, I enjoy your bluesy sound and speed. Thank you very much, Frank. Can you play some of your new tuning harps, says Rick. Um, yeah. I'm 
Jane Doe says, does he make his own brand of harmonicas? I'm not sure who you're talking about. Me? Um, I don't make my own brand, but um, I do have, you know, the, the wild tuning is, is something that's manufactured by Seidel and uh, sold on my website. <coughs> okay, yeah, I, I'll... Uh, <coughs> Probably finish soon, but uh, I'll play a little bit for you. Found this uh, back and track on YouTube just before. It's called Tasty Blues Rock Guitar Back and Track Jam in A. In case anyone was interested in finding it themselves. And I'm going to use one of my harps in the key of D. <laughs> changes are in this back and track by the way. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in, guys. I'm going to wrap it up there. I um, hope you uh, enjoyed my first live stream. And, um, yeah, as I said, if, if you're interested in, in getting hold of one of these, head over to willharmonicawild.com. Um, and uh, I'll be back with uh, some more videos and uh, possibly some more live streams soon. Uh, have a good week. I'll see you later. Cheers. <laughs>